di Politeknik Harapan bersama Tegal, aku ngambil jurusan Teknik Informatika. Tapi setelah dibangkit, saya keterima di jarum cloud computing dan ini tuh pertama kalinya aku belajar cloud computing karena waktu di kuliah aku konsentrasinya sama web. Oke. Okay. Dan okay. kegiatan untuk oh, oke. Okay. Oke, okay, please continue. Please. Please continue, Mrs. Nurul. Ya, jadi untuk kegiatan yang sehari-hari sih, ini lagi ngerjain Coursera sama Piklet. Terima kasih. Piklet. Oke, okay. uh, thank you all for introducing yourself. Um, because the time is limited so we uh, we start so i saw your uh, project you select the theme of the uh, political stability rule of law national security and the public services transformation right yes okay so the next is Uh, please introduce your projects and your plan uh, for the uh, the next plan for your team actually you can uh, speak uh, maybe i don't know who who, who. first uh, please uh, introduce your project in general the purpose of your project and then uh, technically uh, another person can assist the person who okay explain the general project please start who will start maybe ifari or maybe who's? ifari or can i try okay please okay so i think i'm going to share my screen Oh, wait. There you go. Okay. Can you see my screen? Okay. So uh, our project is called Face News. And basically, uh, generally, this application or this project aim to uh, generate analysis, uh, sentiment analysis for from news. Uh, especially from Indonesian news. So we are targeting for now, uh, we're targeting, we, we cover the news from Jakarta because we want uh, our project to be used by Jakarta Smart. And uh, you can read here from the executive summary. Uh, uh, at first we talked that the problem is about uh, our country with the most hoaxes and corona. And uh, from this uh, problem, especially uh, all the news containing or false information that is mistakenly told uh, to be uh, uh, to be reliable, therefore uh, we want to make a application that collects all news and then. Uh, the government or the stakeholder then uh, can use the application to to uh, you know to generate the sentiment of the news like uh, for example past seven days or the for the past month uh, what news uh, will go out and what is the sentiment if it's positive then uh, what kind of positive news that the government can give then what's the negative news then the government uh, can decide probably if the news about criminalist criminalities or about politicals or something like that, they can take another uh, action to mitigate the uh, to mitigate the problem. That is uh, our problem statement. And for the technical part itself, uh, 
actually there are three models that we want to build. So itu yang sebelumnya mana itu? Bisa share apa arsitekturnya yang oh, oke okay. wait. So our team already create a diagram. That's nah. Can you see the diagram? Yes. Okay. This is uh, the first architecture. Still, uh, we can still like update this uh, that uh, match with our uh, requirements. So the first one we're going to need to scrap the data from news. And now we are using two sources. The first one is from compass.com and the second one is static.com. And then uh, we are using a machine learning model, probably TensorFlow, to uh, generate the model and then deploy it in the Google Cloud Platform. And after that, uh, uh, there, is a cloud there is a cloud scheduler that will trigger Uh, once every day, probably at uh, 12 a.m. at night. It's 12 a.m. At, at night. Or, yeah, uh, it will be triggered once in a day to scrap news data uh, in that particular day. And after that, uh, uh, the news will be uh, analyzed by uh, the this uh, layer using call function. And after all the news, already be, be analyzed, then it will be stored in the Cloud SQL. And then there is a news API that will collect the data from the uh, Cloud SQL, and then the uh, front-end application or the mobile application will call this API. I think there is one more model here. Can you explain it, Torek? Okay. Uh, from the machine learning part. Okay. In the news, we select the only apa namanya only Jakarta news Jakarta for governance news ya yeah, that can relate with Jakarta governance so we make one model uh, to classify the what the kind of news that relate with the Jakarta governance what's not that's like a text classification problem and yeah I think like that And we have an idea to classify a uh, news that will that will not apa uh, not correlated with governance, but that still correlated in Jakarta. Maybe for the apa namanya for penduduknya rakyat rakyat Jakarta lah ini kurang lebih seperti itu. Uh, mungkin selanjutnya bisa ditampilkan. Show the uh, mock-up-nya, the mock-up, and show the visualization. Oh, wait. Uh, someone here have the link? Because I don't have the link. <laughs> for the in the database, we save the label. For category and sentiment for each news and in the data and in the mobile we visualize the data. For visualization, I think we need to show the mockup. Oh, that's wait, wait. Okay. Still loading. My internet connection is unstable. Zoom. Okay. 
say my internet connection is unstable. Probably anyone here that has stable connection can share the screen. So I'll stop my screen. Okay, I'm gonna stop the screen because it's really unstable currently. <laughs> I'm sorry. Someone, please. I still can open it yet. Uh, you can start sharing. Uh, I can. Okay. Do yes. not. Do not. Open it. I think. Android who make it can show the with me maybe then don't see okay. can share the screen I think I'll start to share my screen. Okay. okay. Um Actually, we have three people designing the mock-up design. Here's the first one. Uh, more or less, they are more or less they are the same. Uh, here is the landing page, which will direct the users to uh, the categories that they want to choose, starting from health, education, transportation, until criminality. And let's say we want to look for health, and we click this button right here, and it will lead us to this page. Um, this page will consist, uh, we're planning to add three graphs. So uh, we're planning to have bar chart, line chart, and also word of cloud. And uh, at the bottom, uh, there's a button that directs the users to the list of news, for example, like this. And when you click one of the news, for example, this one, it will direct the users to this page. But again, it is still not fixed yet. Uh, I, I believe we're going to fix on the design by the end of this week. I believe that's all. Oh yeah, sorry, uh, here is the third design. Yeah, that's it. You can more describe the visualization. Pardon? Uh, we should describe more what 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 we visualize. Uh, uh, for the question, yeah, I think Erica. Can. This part, right? Yeah. Yeah. What uh, visualization we. So, um, yeah, for the visualization part, I think this one highlights uh, the main point of this news. So, uh, for example, uh, we have a line chart right here, and at the bottom, this is the ranked, uh, I mean, most shows ranked. And actually, we're uh, planning to use tags, uh, I mean keywords, and on the right, there's the numbers of how many of these words show up, how often they show up on the news. And that's the line chart. For the bar chart, uh, as Mastoric said, uh, we're having, we're planning to have uh, the 
green ones as the positive sentiment, while the red as negative sentiment. And last but not least, we have the word of cloud showing how often, uh, what is what are the words that show most often in the news? Sorry about that. Uh, pick a phrase that something in the word of cloud, we show the only topic, what the topic, most topic show in the news. Yeah. That's hard. Yeah, I believe that's all. Shall I stop screen sharing now? Mr. Yusira, uh, any are you finished yeah yeah okay so it's nice idea actually that you would like to detecting the uh, wax right for articles i think it's not to wax mr it just scraping the data from the uh, credible credible uh, canal beta and credible, and we just make a sentiment analysis for that and topic classification. Okay, so you would like to detect the credibility of the article, right? the credibility. Uh, so is it like uh, in the news uh, from the internet and then your systems can detect that those news are uh, credible or not? Is it right like that? Uh, not I uh, read. Uh, kita cuma memilih berita yang dari kanal berita yang terpercaya saja gitu buat hmm. kredibilitasnya. Jadi main dari utama dari kita itu buat klasifikasi sentimen untuk menampilkan visualisasi tadi dan juga untuk uh, klasifikasi topik untuk kira-kira topik mana sih yang banyak sentimen positifnya, mana yang banyak negatifnya kurang lebih seperti itu yang bisa oh, digunakan okay. untuk pemerintahan gitu kurang lebih seperti itu. Oh oke oke oke. Oke oke. Itu okay, juga visualisasi. Oke oke, okay, okay, I can catch. Oke. Okay. Send out uh, positive sentiment and negative uh, sentiment from uh, government's policy. Uh, from everywhere sih. Terserah bisa man, apapun berkaitan dengan topik-topik tertentu itu. Oke. Okay. So, do you have any specific uh, target of consumer who's going to be who's going to use your applications? Ting uh, pemerintahan Jakarta, Jakarta Smart City. Oke. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you would uh, so the government can check the sentiments of whatever from the topics that you are uh, uh, providing, like a uh, health, economics, and so on, like that. Yeah, karena emang buat beritanya aja. Beritanya juga yang dipilih itu cuma berita tentang pemerintahan Jakarta. Jadi untuk yang bukan pemerintahan Jakarta itu dibuang gitu. Oke, okay. so Bisa, your target ya. consumer mostly uh, for uh, government of the Jak Jakarta Regency. Yeah. Oke, okay. so you can 
bold that your target consumer is uh, uh, Jakarta governments, Jakarta Regency governments, like that. So we can understand who's going to use your application mostly. And then uh, so okay so the main part of this application like another groups is the machine learning part right? because it rep responsible for building the or providing the sentiments like your visualization that you have shown to me it shows that uh, there is the gradation of the sentiments right either positive or negatives i think that is a good visualization but uh, you should uh, maybe fix in the what's that the framework of your or the framework of the your system and uh, as you can assume in the uh, your framework is it is it right that the system will uh, train automatically your model will train the automatically mm, one of the model i think we just need to train one at a time i think uh, not not enggak harus setiap hari gitu soalnya perlu pelabelan manual sih untuk pelab untuk itunya untuk modelnya oke okay, so the labeling is done manually yeah. by persons so it's not active learning yeah. so uh, there's people that are working on these applications by labeling the ground truth of this uh, whatever source of news or whatever so okay so there, there should be a training part and testing part there inside the uh, machine learning models so you should add that because even it's not done every day the machine learning uh, reg regularly will learn the new label and new articles and should, you should put there and also the testing part or prediction part the prediction part uh, mostly the machine already giving you the sentiments right so you put that training and testing and you should explain uh, when the training is done and then where uh, when the uh, when the labeling is done so on so also the data is growing right so the articles are keeping coming you should also explain how you tackle this problem because it will it's your storage cloud storage as the uh, the texts are coming it will uh, uh, you should provide more what storage to uh, save them all and then your model 
starts to learn again. And then specifically, please uh, tell me what's the machine learning algorithm that you are using and how you extract from the raw text, raw sentences to the uh, features to fit into the machine learning. Okay, please. Okay, maybe because I'm machine learning part, I can I should explain it. And uh, for the model, the first thing in the in the article or news, we extract the content of the news and have many paragraph in it, and we just extract the in the model baseline. Uh, I think we just extract the every word in the every data, every word. So it just have it akan menjadi sebuah back of word. Jadi misalnya ada suatu kata, misalnya ada atau ada sesuatu lah ada itu ada dari berita tersebut tuh ada empat gitu. Jadi fitur ada itu memiliki nilai 4 kurang lebih seperti itu hmm. untuk the hmm. work. Hmm. Okay. Itu untuk model baseline-nya dengan data yang lebih sedikit. Jadi dari model baseline kita coba lihat kira-kira fitur-fitur apa yang benar-benar berguna gitu. Jadi lebih ke arah melihat dari fit, semua fitur kan fiturnya mungkin ada banyak di situ. Kita pilih untuk menjadi model baseline okay. dari fit, semua fitur itu yang kira-kira important dan pen, penting uh, menggunakan kalau untuk baseline idenya menggunakan logistic regression karena di situ bisa lihat koefisiennya jadi kira-kira kita bisa melihat seberapa penting sih kata itu seberapa positif seberapa negatif kurang lebih seperti itu jadi kita seleksi di situ dan dari mode baseline itu akan digunakan untuk melabelin melabeli data-data selanjutnya dan itu juga akan direvisi akan dibener di dikoreksi di oleh kita semua. Jadi data yang udah berlabel tadi kita akan benarkan. Jadi data akan menjadi lebih banyak. Ketika data lebih banyak, mungkin kita juga bisa menggunakan fitur yang lebih banyak untuk model baseline tadi. Idenya itu menggunakan fitur yang lebih sedikit, mungkin 100 atau berapa gitu. Sedangkan untuk data yang lebih, karena emang kalau misalnya datanya itu sedikit, itu lebih condong ke suatu kata biasanya. Ada banyak bias di situ. Ketika kita menggunakan data yang lebih banyak, model lebih stabil dan mungkin lebih apa ya, lebih stabil lah, lebih terpercaya lah, karena nggak ada bias-bias misalnya. Gara-gara hari tersebut tuh banyak berita tentang ini, jadi bias ke berita ini. Gitu. Kurang lebih seperti itu sih. Untuk okay. model finalnya mungkin bisa mencoba neural network atau mungkin model-model berbasis gradient boosting mungkin yang cukup menjadikan. Oke, okay. I agree with you that data is growing and it will be accumulated into the some kind of big data. So uh, recently, uh, deep learning uh, switched to these con uh, conditions where uh, data is evidence, uh, deep, learning, deep learning with a high number of parameters can uh, handles or it, it can uh, uh, read the pattern of the big data compared to the uh, uh, Lucy uh, algorithms like uh, uh, logistic regressions. So in my suggestion that uh, you use the some kind of state of the art uh, uh, deep learning for NLP like BERT, you can search BERT 
recently my students also use BERT for NLP. There is also a pre-training provided in Indonesian language, so you can make use of it for your purpose. It gives you better accuracy than the, some uh, another models on big data. So it's just my suggestion, whether you, you, whether you will uh, uh, do it or not, is depend on you. And then uh, you should also uh, think about the efficient algorithm. The algorithms should efficient as possible. It doesn't harm the cloud storage, but also it gives you high accuracy. So uh, users can trust your applications. Right? Like that, uh, maybe also kind of my suggestions. Also, the efficient algorithm will give you the speed of detections. The, uh, uh, the, the faster the detection is, the better the, your application will be. That's uh, several things that you should consider for your machine learning algorithm. Okay, yes. And then uh, uh, for another uh, members, maybe you have uh, opinions or you can share your thought, maybe from cloud, how you support these applications or maybe the UI UX, what's your idea to support your project? Please, anyone else? So from the cloud itself, uh, one problem is how we store the data. Uh, at first, I thought that we can use a uh, NoSQL base like Cloud Firestore because uh, it's document based and we can store the data uh, like in the document uh, representation like JSON or yeah uh, stuff like that. But uh, I think because sometimes we also need to uh, utilize the query from SQL like because in SQL or relational database uh, they can uh, they already provide um, much more complex queries. For example, they can uh, count or grouping based on a column, like we are using group by uh, categories probably or group by date, etc. So we now we are thinking we, we're going to use the uh, Cloud SQL, but still I'm still thinking that we can probably utilize uh, another database solution. For example, uh, if the data is growing, so probably we can uh, use NoSQL, but I still don't uh, have an idea of what kind of database that uh, it's best fit and fits our requirements. And for now, uh, I'm still thinking uh, we provide uh, quite solution and not so bad when it, when it comes to uh, querying the data. Okay. So, uh, do you consider so, about using the cloud service? Yeah. Yep. Because uh, from bank itself, we are given uh, like two hundred credits, and we have to utilize that. Okay, you can make use of it. For your purpose, yep. okay. And until now, explore some of uh, Google Cloud services, and uh, I hope that at the end of this week I can give like a fixed solution to this problem. 
Okay. So maybe you can see assist another especially machine learning. And yes. then, uh, uh, okay, please continue. It's enough? Yeah. Uh, okay, please. Actually, during my first week, I built the public scraper. So I assisted machine learning because uh, at the time, uh, my our job test as, as a cloud computing is still not that much. And also, Nurul was doing the UI UX part and uh, also uh, creating the mock-up. So from the code itself, we are mostly still uh, helping. Is, uh, are you, okay, the mock-up, you, you will show to me the mock-up? Oh, it's Nurul that built the mock-up. Nurul is also the cloud computing part, same as me. Okay. How about the Androids or UI UX? I think it's the uh, the visualization of the UI or UX. It's uh, interesting that you give uh, some informative uh, sentiment analysis of the several topics you provide colors, graphs, and any other artifacts. So you should uh, keep the UI or UX as simple as possible, but rich of information. Okay. Maybe, uh, okay, that's all for I can uh, suggest or any recommendations to all of you. So the the time the the remaining time is only two weeks, maybe. So you should hurry for your project. So the output of this project will be a prototype and then proposals right to convince the reviewers about your applications at least you should uh, make sure that your prototypes is run properly not perfect but run properly. For example, you can highlight the sentiments one. So maybe from the topics, user can select and see the gradation of sentiments. I think it's uh, enough for you to sh uh, uh, show the application to them. Right. And you explain how you the, uh, gather the data, how the data can be saved, and the information can be, can be updated after the learning is done. That uh, is enough. Uh, not necessarily perfect, but you can show to them that it's work with good visualization is enough, I think. And then for the uh, uh, improvement of your application, you can do it later. If the proposal is accepted, you can revise or you can improve, you can make it perfect, so, can, so it's uh, ready to be used by uh, Jakarta Regency, governments, or society. Okay, like that. This remaining time is limited, so you should uh, uh, consider 
your time you should uh, think about your strategy to make to make sure that uh, these two the prototype and the proposals are finished on time okay that's your job so you can arrange yourself considering your availability of time okay that's all that i can uh, uh, suggest to you i think for another uh, i am i i will not give any comments maybe it's uh, enough now it's all depend on you how you achieve your uh, final uh, final uh, prototypes okay the uh, the executive summary is start by uh, references i think is also good because you starting from the references okay that's all is the uh, one hour is almost past and if you have any question further maybe we can meet again if if necessary you can contact me via email but before i close this meeting if any one of you have any questions please ask me right now okay probably me first uh, any other mentoring session or is it just this one Okay, is it enough? Okay, if it's enough, uh, thank you for you all for attending this meeting. Don't forget to fill out the form that you have been that have been given to you. Do you know about that form? Right? Please fill out. And I hope you success succeeded to uh, your capstone your capstone project okay Gifari, please uh by the way mr Yudhistira, uh is this only the one meeting that we can have or we can have the further meeting so yeah we can have a further meeting if you want you can ask me via email so we can arrange about the time and uh may i have another question i think for the uh, business prospect you know it's uh it's about for uh government so I still don't know how to connect it, like make the business to the government. Okay. Uh, uh, actually, your your application is not potentially not really on government, but also has a potential to be used by the society right maybe right now you have a target consumer on to on uh, jakarta's government but it can be expanded for another users so don't worry about the you how, how you uh, connect with the jakarta government if you can convince the re reviewers and you maybe the 
top 15 of this uh, capstone project i believe that the maybe bankit organizer maybe will promote your application maybe to the governments okay thank you Mr. okay any other questions Okay, not yet. Okay. Okay. Uh, nice to see you all, Gifari, uh, Torik, Isa, Ilham, Erika, and Nurul. Hope we can meet again. Uh, nice to see you all. Uh, thank you for enjoying this meeting. I hope you all succeed in this bucket program and your career in the real life okay okay have a nice rest good night and see you again assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh see you later